I, when I was inducted into the Hewlett High School Hall of Fame, I told my driver's ed story. And, uh, and there was a small crowd, but it was a hysterical story, and everybody loved the story. What was the story? Oh, no, the story's way too long. It, it, I, haven't I told that story a thousand times? I'm not sure you have. The driver's ed story? Okay. You can't tease like that. No, uh, okay. Not. Um, I don't, I don't have that much time to do this. We're going to run over. When I was a senior in high school in the second semester of my senior year, I was the youngest person in my graduating class. So if I didn't get in the driver's ed car, then I probably wouldn't have driven until after I got out of college. So I'm in the driver's ed car and the teacher's name is Mr. Smilo, C-M-Y-A-L-O. There's two driver's ed teachers. They're always large men. And they, you know, they, they make a point of reading the paper while you're driving because they want to show you that they don't have a care in the world. In my car, along with me, there are three people. This is a Broadleaf Motors Plymouth from uh, from Woodmere. They're in the Broadleaf Motors, not in. It's a push button Plymouth. It's in the mid sixties. In my car is Susan Pfeffer, who went on <laughs> to become a a very famous and renowned writer of children's books, and that would be fine uh, in most places to take a course with Susan Pfeffer, but she was also legally blind. <laughs> She had glasses that were so thick you could skate on them, and how she got in the driver's ed car was a mystery to all of us. The second person in the driver's ed car was Tina Wade, Christina Wade, a cheerleader, gorgeous. Tina had been driving getaway cars for six or seven years (laughs) at that point, and Tina liked to do her nails while she was driving and smoke Marlboro Greens. Marlboro Greens had just come out at that time. And so Tina, we didn't understand why Tina was in the driver's ed car. Tina had had been driving for a very long time. Tina at one point got angry with another car and while Hewlett High School was building a pool, drove it into the pool and left it there in six feet of water Then just walked away. That was Tina's move. Tina, as, as we like to say about people like Tina, Tina didn't need no last name. Tina was great. So we're driving one day. We're driving and we're, we're, we have to go up East Rockaway Road, make a right turn out of the high school and drive up into this in a one lane, you know, road situation and drive up into this small little village of East Rockaway and parallel park and do things like that. Before we get there, um, uh, Susan Pfeffer is allowed to drive only in the state park. East Rockaway State Bay, uh, East Rockaway Bay State Park, whatever it was called. She's only allowed to drive there because there are no other cars there. You can't take her out on the road. She's can't blind, boys and girls. Say. You can't take her out on the road with cars coming at her. This is a very bad idea. So that's her job. She has no chance of ever getting a license. We understand that. And Smilo sits there, and he, he for, for her, for Susan Pfeffer. Puts he, the newspaper down. He puts the newspaper down and pretends. Yeah. Okay, so now he says to me, Tina, he says to Tina, Tina, take it up to East Rockaway. And Tina says, I, I, you know, really, I've got to do my nails. So she's in the back seat and she's doing her nails. Susan Pfeffer has already driven. It is my turn. I'm taking the car up East Rockaway Road. All right, I'm taking the car up East Rockaway Road. Tina's in the back seat, smoking cigarettes and doing her nails. Susan Pfeffer can't see, doesn't even know we're on the road. And Smilo's sitting in the front seat. Everything is fine. He says, do me a favor, parallel park here. And uh, because I, I need to I need to get out, I need to get a donut or whatever it is or so on and so forth. I successfully parallel park. He says, all right, you, you get out of the car and Tina, you drive us home after I go get what, what I'm doing. I open the car door. A truck going really? 30 miles an hour plows into the car door, <laughs> knocks the door off. There's no door. I'm looking to my left. There's no door. This causes some of us to shake. Not Susan. Because she didn't, she see, didn't it. see it. She didn't see it. Smilo puts the Her paper down. Her dog saw it, though. Puts, she did not have a guide dog. <laughs> Smilo, I'm, I'm really shortening this story. It's a really good story. Smilo puts the paper down and goes to t- looks in Tina in the back, and she says, you got another one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Driver's head car, boom. Goes the dynamite. It's a, it's a much longer story. But good. I've told it well, for time. Well, thank God purposes. you didn't get out simultaneously yeah. with the door opening. We might not be here today. We had to drive home without a door. <laughs> okay, there's no door. The door is tumbling down the road. So, luckily I got a license. All right, what? Now I'm going to be windows? St- great story. Yes. Thank you for that. I don't think I've ever heard that story. That's great I've story. told that story a million times. It's, it's like the John Wooden story. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've, I, no, I've told it a million times. Uh, now, let me make this short on windows. Tina's still cute? I don't know, but boy, oh boy, was she a gorgeous girl, Christina Wade, Tina Wade. Susan, you know, get hot. LASIK? 
I don't know. I, I don't know what happened to any of them. I lost my hair and went on TV. I don't know about them. I like that story. Shared in a haiku for Tina. Those Marlboro Greens, so hip it hurts nail polish. She needs but one name. Very, very good. Here comes Tony's Mailbag. Go to read some for all you folks. Might we be sponsored, Nigel? We are indeed, Mr. Tony, brought to you by Mervis Diamond and Pools. Nobody pays retail anymore, so why should you? From Brendan Borzelli in Lebanon, New Jersey, uh, having never heard the driver's ed story before, I'm confused about the ending. Was it Junior driving John Wooden or John <laughs> Wooden himself driving the truck that took off the door? Loyal podcaster from the West Coast, so I'm sure this won't be read on air until September after your vacation. I want to let you know your driver's ed story nearly cost me my life, or at least my dignity at the gym. I was on the treadmill while listening and nearly fell off laughing when he got to the part where the truck hit the door. After regaining my composure, I looked up to see those around me staring in horror as I stumbled, holding my sides, laughing out loud, trying not to fall on my tuchus. Thanks for keeping Susie me Susie Pfeffer. Tom McGarry. I'm not only a loyal podcaster in a little, but a graduate of George W. Hewlett High School, 1979. I want to thank you for making Mother's Day a little more special this year. While listening to the driver's ed story on Sunday, my ears perked up when you mentioned Tina Wade. I was sure Tina Wade grew up on my block in Gibson, the other side of the tracks in Hewlett. Later, I called my mother to wish her happy Mother's Day. I asked her about Tina Wade. My mother's in her 80s. And sometimes small talk on the phone is very difficult, but she's sharp as a tack when it comes to the old neighborhood. She not only knew Tina, but verified your impression of her. It was great to talk old times with <laughs> Tina mom. was the beauty. S- Gorgeous. Susan was the blind chick. Blind. You're out on your bike tonight. Everyone, as always, do wear white. Now, if there's anything I can do for you, well, I certainly hope you'll die soon. 